All right, here we go. You ready? Good. Hey everybody, welcome back to the musical tour of The Spiral. Let's do another Pirate 101 track, shall we? Somebody uh, left a comment, was asking about the Smuggler's Arena. I haven't listened to this track in a while. I went back and uh, checked it out and I was like, oh yeah, this one, this is a lot of fun. Uh, this one actually has the dubious distinction of being the only tune, I think, in The Spiral that's over two minutes long. This one's two and a half minutes. This accompanies an area in the game where there were gonna be mobs coming at the player nonstop. As such, they thought this might go on for a while. So they decided on a longer loop here. And in the remix, I didn't add a lot of new material. I, it mostly held up. I needed to clean up some of the slop just for my own peace of mind so I could sleep at night. So the input I got from King's Isle felt a little bit confused. I didn't quite know which direction they wanted to go. I actually wrote almost a completed track. We just didn't really like it at the end of that. So the track that everybody knows from Smuggler's Arena was not the first track I wrote for it. So maybe we'll listen to that other track later. In addition to the longer length of the track, we decided to keep it a little bit lighter, still interesting and exciting and upbeat, but more of like a, a fun celebration tune rather rather than a darker combat tune. So some of the inspiration coming in had more of a Celtic feel. Once I switched into that headspace, everything fell into place and the track went together pretty easily. Back in the day, I actually wrote music for a game called Age of Booty. It was a pirate game and it was one of those hexagon games where you moved around the screen and attacked ports and attacked other pirate ships and tried to amass wealth and gold and booty, i.e. treasure. I didn't write the music for the original game, which I think was on PC. A company I've occasionally worked with was, was doing like a mobile OS port of the game. And my job was to study the original tracks and then write some more tracks in that style using that instrumentation and the same same kind of vibe. So it was a really interesting exercise where I had to study a style of music that I didn't write in a lot. In doing that, I actually got a lot of experience that I wound up channeling into this track. So how about we listen to this uh, and then I'll continue blabbing on about it. This is the Smuggler's Arena. 2022 Re -re Remix here in 101.0 The, the Pirate, Pirate.
So it's been a while since I put this track back together. So I didn't even remember what violin I was looking at. This fiddle, it's mostly chopping, right? I was kind of doing spiccato here. So this is the LA scoring strings. patches that I still use. That one still sounds really great. Uh, rule number one of simulating instruments on the keyboard is to kind of write something that sounds good with the sounds that you have. Too many composers or arrangers use a sound. Maybe it's like a long uh, string sound and it's more legato so it's got kind of a slower attack and then they try and play flat, faster things with it. So I definitely try to play around with a sound that's caught my ear, see what it's good at, and then try and write a part that suits that. Lots of guitar parts. These guitars came from various places. This is the Acoustic Guitar Collection remix from Indigenous. It's just a good solid acoustic sound that I've liked. I find them pretty playable. Uh, so I thought that had just a nice ambience. And then this other guitar is from East West Quantum Leap Ra, which is one of the first world instruments collection that I bought for Contact. 1890 Washburn guitar has a little bit more flavor on it. A little more in your face. And then here is. So both of them really give you the idea that there's sort of a group of guitarists on stage. Also joining them is the mandolin. And notice it's doing kind of a different rendition of that pattern. Not all of your players are going to play exactly the same thing. So sometimes it's good to have some variety in there. So that's laying down the nice folksy bass there for us. Now we have a harmonium. A harmonium is not necessarily an instrument you'd find on a sailing ship. It is a, uh, a pump organ, an organ that you would ac actually had pedals and you would pump up the bellows and they would blow air through the reeds that would make the sound. But it sounds very similar to a, an accordion. Uh, or the simpler versions of accordion, which I, I think they're called bandoneons. You know, if you think of a pirate sailing ship or in a port somewhere, they probably would have instruments they could carry with them that were portable, that were easy to, you know, throw in a bag. And an accordion is kind of big and unwieldy. I also put in a melodica. A melodica is that instrument. Oh, there it is. This is from a company called Waves Factory. And the melodica is really doing... A lot of this tune is, you know, an instrument has a solo. As it kind of gets, you know, passed around from player to player. Hey, uh, Lucas, take a solo. And then they'd play it around. And some of these solos are, are kind of awkward. You know, they're not always the most carefully crafted solos. But, you know, they have the spirit of the piece in there. I play this stuff in live to try and get the energy of somebody if somebody just went hey take it and you had to play that this might be what comes out it's not perfect but it's got the right energy for that part of the tune right there you got to be careful doing this sometimes with the uh, sampled sounds because that's going to eat up a lot of polyphony and sometimes it doesn't work with certain patches remember what i was saying about use a sound for what it's good at <laughs> sounds right uh, and here's this whistle This is a pretty detailed whistle. Uh, this website, uh, Loot Audio, 20 pounds. What is that in freedom bucks? There you go, $26.71 bucks. So this library has a lot of attention to detail. The only problem with putting new sounds in there, it's like you usually just can't slap a new sound in and play the old MIDI through it. You usually have to play it again. So I played it again, Sam. I thought this was a cine sample sound. This is Dickie Deegan's Illin Pipes. talked about the frame drum in the opening here here's the sound that definitely has a tone that makes mixing it sometimes a bit of a challenge just to make sure it's not 
it's not too present in there. Uh, and I went through a lot of different smaller hand percussion and found a lot of other world instruments that worked well with that frame drum. This is called a cajon. You may uh, have seen one around a campfire, you know, acoustic guitar jam. It's a box and it's got a snare inside and it can also have a foot pedal with it. Sitting on it, you tap it with your hands and you can play the pedal to get more of a bass tone depending upon where you hit it on the box. The frame drum and the cajon together. It's definitely going with that kind of triplet. This track is labeled Tar, uh, but I think it's the ton back is a Persian uh, goblet drum, you know, skin across the top. Let's fix that, shall we? Because a tar, is, I think, is like a uh, like a lute instrument. Getting some flavor of just a big group percussion ensemble. Then I got some shakers. And a tambourine, always good for kind of piratey music. Again, it's it's the small instruments that you could have hanging up in your bunk and you know can grab when you're playing music with the boys on the deck. I don't know if anybody ever said that. Really, this combat drum was the instrument that kind of started bringing it back together. So just putting this combat drum right on the downbeat. Boom. Is really all it took to turn it from kind of a lighter affair into something that just had a little bit heavier weight. I always like taikos, the Japanese drums. They just have just really expressive different ways to hit them and different sounds that you can get out of them. There's a lot of stick clicks and stuff. There's percussion. really trying to make each one of these voices add to the mass of it instead of having one part that was too busy it's really kind of a group activity part off the top just sort of setting the scene for the melody here and the mandolin double so a lot of this is sort of patterned off maybe an Irish uh, jig or a reel. And obviously a lot of Celtic music has some pretty fast melodies that are really quickly playing with the chords. I love listening to skilled Celtic players just just ripping through scales. <laughs> both the fiddle and the mandolin both have some facility so it can play some faster parts here. So notice that the fiddle drops back to accompaniment roll as the melodica takes the melody there. And the part, uh, I'm gonna, let's mute the melodica. So again, the fiddle's playing kind of a different rhythm than the guitars here. trying different combinations, not just for the melody, but also in the accompaniment, right? The fiddle goes from solo mode to accompany mode, and then later on comes back in with some more melody, you know, now doubled with the whistle. Uh, and then the mandolin comes back in there, wasn't it, wasn't accompanying yet, but comes in after the melodica has their phrase. Uh, and I find those like little interstitial parts, just the, the smaller crafted parts that are designed to fit in a very specific hole uh, to be really satisfying. I obviously kind of improv that on the melodica part and then decided to use that, like echo it in the accompaniment parts.
So the mandolin playing this part, this it's not really a it's not an improvised solo. It's it's more kind of like a little groove where the mandolin is featured. I like these parts too because it sounds it sounds more crafted and more organized. Uh, and you notice the triangle part actually comes in there too. I don't know what it is with me and triangle parts. Uh, lately, I've been playing them live. It's fun to play, and it's just sort of a small, very rhythmic thing where you're really trying to feel the groove and figuring out what that part is, this really tiny, specific part. That's turned down in the mix so much. I, if I had to do it again, I might mix it up a little bit more. Oh, it's in the right speaker. is more of my signature large sort of stabby string sound. It's another groove. It's not really, it's not really a feature of anything. It's just sort of a, a groove that feels nice that everybody's sort of together. Uh, the bass actually comes in for the first time there. So I didn't think this would work, but when I uh, when I put it in, it started feeling really good. So when I played that part a little straighter, it made me realize that I could take the guitar and mandolin parts and play those a little straighter too, and it would would shift the groove subtly here. And then it comes back into this. So that's the fiddle and the whistle and the melodica playing that part. This is a neat part because it just, it's the same. And it just sort of keeps moving down into uh, different ranges until it finally kind of flings you out the other side. And there's the pipes. I love the sound of the pipes. It's just so human and expressive. This was one of the more fun parts to play. I actually cleaned it up a little bit, uh, played it in again, uh, just to clean up some of the slop in, but mostly just because it was fun to play and I like to do it again. And this part here, I definitely hear me stretching a little bit. I hear me like trying to come up with some other ideas. And hey, look at the time frame here. It's right at the two minute mark. So let's listen to just the fiddle here. So that part is still doing the little swingy part, but then the next part is da 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 the straight eight. So I'm really going back and forth between those two different feels. And, and I remember going, ah, should I pick one or the other? And I was like, wait a minute, no, it feels good to to go back and forth between the two different feels. Pretty typical phrase in a lot of Celtic music. I, I imagine there's a whole library of kind of common phrases that people know how to play. It's it's probably like swing music where there's sort of a vocabulary of of rhythms and phrases that people tend to use a lot. I was listening to Celtic music, you know, to try and I just sort of absorb through osmosis some of the stuff that was in there. And there was probably something that was that was kind of like that shape. And I used that vocabulary to, to add a little bit of veracity here. 
Um, I think for the remix, I added the whistle in here. That's what that note's for. Right? It does this it does this phrase twice and the second time it does it up the octave always moving around there oh are we really gonna do this ah all right fine so you'll notice the name of this clip is smugglers arena rough one okay this is rough but it's two minutes of unheard uh music from pirate 101 honestly forgot that i i had written this much of another track i usually you know write 30 or 45 seconds of it to to give the general idea and then send it on but i mean there's nothing wrong with this track it works okay just it didn't work here so it's rough forgive me like that there's a lot of fun stuff in it again it just wasn't right for this particular piece you could hear i think that there's a lot more marley bone in that where the smugglers arena is i think and that was definitely one of the original notes that it needed to fit more into marley bone you could hear a little bit of that celtic influence coming out there's some irish whistle in it you could hear the old whistle sound i used hope you can agree that the new whistle is a vast improvement on there one of the initial ideas for it was that, that it was a little more sneaky there's definitely some espionage you know sneaking around you know it's smugglers arena so it's like a smuggler is a you know somebody in the underworld so that it probably would have been a lot of dark alleys and people passing without looking at each other yeah a lot, lot more epicness to it i did really like some of this more manic i think than what we got out of it so hopefully that was fun to listen to it was for me i i mean i would have written that submitted it and then decided we need to go in a new direction and then never listen to that track again right there's nothing there's no reason to go back to it unless i do stuff like this so and i, I think that this video is probably really long already so i'm gonna leave it there hey if it was fun hearing an unused piece please slap a like on this video let me know down in the comments uh thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one
Thank you.